This happened to Steve Smith, and since it has happened, Smith has not been as good at batting. This is obviously a massive oversimplification, but there is no doubt that since this point, he just has not been the same player. This was a tongue-in-cheek tweet. But what Dave is really trying to say here is the Smith that we once knew seems gone. And it would be hard to argue with that because the days of Smith piling on 100 after 100 are at the very least paused. And I don't want to say he's finished as the player he was because we always do that. I think my favorite is the constant LeBron James article about how he's slowing down. Here is the most recent one. But what about one on Reddit from 2020, which was the year that LeBron won his fifth championship. The year before the ringer was talking about it. In 2018, it was Vice who was saying it. And in 2017, it was ESPN. Everyone wants to call it first. But that hasn't really been as much the case with Steve Smith so far. But it is clear that he's not quite the player he was. I wouldn't write Steve Smith off because I did that in 2013. And then he had perhaps the best five year run in cricket history. And he did it with that kind of nonsensical technique that wouldn't work for anyone else. In fact, as many first class cricketers are currently proving, it actually doesn't work. But this video is about how he's not making as many runs anymore. And I did start to see something in 2019. It wasn't Smith slowing down at first. It was more a change of line and length from the bowlers. And I noticed it right at the end of the 2019 Ashes. I can't remember if it came from a comment on Twitter or even by a player involved in that series. But one way or another, I got obsessed with the fact that England were bowling more at the stumps to him. And looking back, what I was really seeing was the point in which teams stopped bowling wide of off stump to him, which is not quite the same thing. But importantly, this is how I got the date, the 11th of September, 2019. So this is five years before the day. This is all the batters in the world against pace bowling from September of 2014 until 19. There are some good batters in here. And this is an era when pace bowling was easy to handle. Here are some random good players for you now. Some may call them fab. There's no way you could score a lot of runs in tests without being at least decent against pace because it's 60% of what is bowled there. Oh, and here's Steve Smith. Smith was basically Bradman in a far tougher era against quick bowling for five years. One of my notebooks has a collection of fielding plans for Steve Smith used between 2014 and 2017. Two leg slips to a pace bowler was one of my favorites. I also enjoyed the leg side umbrella. Teams were convinced that Smith would be caught on the leg side, but in those days, he just wasn't. It was around 2015 Ashes when teams started hanging the ball wide outside off stump to him because England had had some success on helpful surfaces. Why bowls his strength was the idea. Keep the ball away from him and make sure the slips are still in the game. Usually for much of Smith's batting, they're not, which is part of the reason he had such a high average. And he wants to hit to leg, so let's make it almost impossible for him. There was also a brief leg stump Yorkers plan in there for a while, but he kept flicking the ball away for four. There was sound cricket thinking in all of this, but it didn't work. Smith did just look like the best batter since Bradman in this period. And he averaged 96 against pace between the 11th of September 2014 and the 11th of September 2019. Yeah, I'm going to need a minute on this one. Yep, let's proceed. That is almost three times as good as what the average top four player in the world was doing back then. But surely there was also someone else in this period who was doing something similar. I mean, Smith is one of the Fab Four, so perhaps one of them. Well, Root averaged early 40s, so it's not him. Coley was much better, and Kane Williamson was just beyond him at 55. There are some very good players all the way down here, but obviously Smith is just taking the piss. But as I said, I did think something had changed at the end of the 2019 Ashes, and clearly it has. You could probably see it best in the difference between spin and pace. There has been a slight drop off against spin, but he's still averaging over 54 against it. However, that is without any tests in Asia. So I would say he's not as good against spin as he was before. But if you're averaging over 50 against something, it's hard to complain too much. But it's worth looking at the start of his test career, which for someone who made so many runs later on, it was fairly slow beginning. And you can see really that his play against Ben has held up, but against pace, he started very slow, became absolutely amazing, and has gone back to his earlier average. So we need to go back to that test where Smith made 80 and 23 at the Oval. Not his best effort, but a decent return. In the first innings, Chris Wokes bowled a ball at the stumps. Smith missed a straight one and was given out LBW. I mean, he was bound to miss one, right? But something went off in my head during that spell, that England were just a lot straighter, more at him. At this point, it was just a fairly unconstructed thought in my head for a long time that I would bring up late at night in bars. But a while back, I did look at it for my blog, and now I'm looking at it again here. At least been in a few more test matches. Because he actually hasn't played that many tests since he made his comeback, thanks to COVID. And Smith's last 12 games have all been at home, which also makes everything a bit weirder. 
So let's look at his dismissals, and some just need to be moved to one side. One was a declaration slog against Shaheen Afridi. Colin de Grandom got in with some stuff outside off. Yassir Shah took him once. Revi Chanbud, Ashwin, and Washington Sundar have got him a few times. But we're leaving all those alone so we can focus on what he's been doing against Seamers going straight. A little bit of grass on the wicket is good, but too much and all hell breaks loose. Not enough and things can go sideways very quick. The same is true of your pubic hair. And you don't have a groundsman who smells like fertilizer telling you what to do. No, you are the curator of your own pubic pitch. So if you're having trouble grooming your pitch, what about Manscaped? They've invented a sleek, well-designed, optimized trimmer that helps you shave your balls. I've used it, and it's incredible. It's good enough to use at Lord's. So get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code REDINCO. And you just put that in at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, free worldwide shipping, manscaped.com. The code is REDINCO. I always thought this podcast took balls more seriously than anyone else. Then I tried Manscaped. First, we have to start with Neil Wagner, who has dismissed Smith five times in tests, four times in the last series alone. And all of those dismissals will be short balls, even the one from 2016, because we are talking about Neil Wagner and, you know, him getting a wicket with a short ball is like Jimmy Anderson getting someone to nick off to an outswinger. But perhaps the most interesting thing wasn't just that Wagner got Smith with the short balls. It's that by the end of that last series, Smith gave up trying to score from them at all. This was the first ball he faced of that last innings versus New Zealand. Wagner hits him in the belly. But then Smith can't score for 38 deliveries. And then to get off the mark, he has to steal a single from another short ball because what else was Wagner going to bowl to him? He almost runs out of Lambertian in the process. This was a guy who was now stuck on no runs and desperate for anything. He did actually make 63 in that innings and it was the only time that Wagner didn't take him. But this was Wagner, right? He annoys people with short balls. That's his thing. But there are other short ball dismissals as well. The first one was Stuart Broad at the Oval in that game I was talking about before. It's not a scary short ball, and Smith moves across as he does quite often, gets inside the line and turns it to leg, but it goes straight to a fine leg sleep. At the time, I thought there's an element in fluke in that. But there are other short balls. There are two more that are quicker, but are also just slightly outside of stump. One from Mohamed Siraj and another one from Mark Wood. So there's a couple more wickets from short balls. But I think the most concerning one is this from Ollie Robertson who isn't quick and really isn't about getting people out with short deliveries, despite his high release point. So we're now up to quite a few short balls. And quite a few of them have also been caught behind square on the leg side. And before that random dismissal by Broad, I could only find three times he'd ever been caught behind square in tests. One in 14-15 at the MCG, Chris Tremlett got him when he made his comeback at the Wacker, and Wagner's first wicket against Smith. But while Wagner is a common denominator, so is New Zealand. Twice in ODIs, they've got him caught behind square on the leg side. Bolt in 2016 was one. And then the Martin Guptill amazing catch at Leg Gully at Lords during the World Cup. In that same World Cup, Sheldon Cottrell caught him with another stunner off a hook shot from O'Shane Thomas. So it does feel that somewhere around 2019, people worked out that the best place to bowl at Smith was short and at him. And remember those World Cup dismissals I just talked about were actually before the Ashes. So at this point, Jofra Archer hadn't even hit Smith. And at that point, not that many people were talking about any kind of weakness for Smith and the short ball. Now people mention it a lot more. And if you look at before and after, you can see the huge differences. You can see that he's been as good against a full ball, although this is not quite accurate, as he actually hasn't been dismissed by a full ball since that date that I chose. But look at all three of the others. There's a drop with all of them. If you focus on shorter lengths, you can see exactly where the problem is. The drop just isn't the bouncer. In fact, he doesn't get dismissed that much by bouncers, as most batters don't. It's really the back of the length ball where he started to struggle. And that's tough, because you can bowl a lot more of those. So on the left, you have before, and you can see that almost half of his balls were length deliveries. But on the right, a lot of those deliveries have been converted to either back of a length or even just short balls. But essentially, people have gone from bowling beneath his waist to above it. But it's not just about averages or the percentage of balls that he actually faces. Sometimes the scoring rates tell us a lot as well. You can see that against the full balls, he's still quite cool with them, but there has been a decent drop off when it comes to normal lengths, but he's scoring at less than half the rate he once did against bouncers. And even though he hasn't been dismissed by them that much, they're now just stopping him from scoring in a way that didn't happen before. But that isn't the only change. And as I said before, teams started bowling straight to him more. This isn't just about bouncers or even back of a length balls. The green here shows bowling wide of off stump as a tactic. Teams used to do it a lot to him. You can see now they barely do it at all anymore. It's barely even a tactic to him. And most of that has gone directly to bowling at the stumps, which has had a 50% increase there. That's substantial. 
And obviously a lot of this is bowling at his body more. But he's also struggled with the ball on a length when it's been straighter. It's only dismissed him twice, but again, it has slowed him right down. Not as much as the short balls or Wagner, but it's still a big drop, and it means that teams can bowl at the stumps a lot more, whether it be short or fuller, because he just doesn't score the way he used to. And it's also worth noting that while the change hasn't been as big for everyone in general, teams are bowling a lot straighter in the last years. And again, most of that just isn't at the stumps. It's just that they're bowling a lot less wide outside of stump. Teams now attack just outside of stump or the stumps themselves, even if they go a little bit shorter. Now, if you allow me to change my arbitrary date just slightly, it's worth looking at the fact that from Smith's suspension due to Sandpaper Gate until now, it has been an abnormally hard period to bat against pace bowling. In fact, let's just jump again, as this really starts around the beginning of 2018. And I've showed the average drop off a few times now, but let me spin this a little. Here are the batters who made 750 runs against pace bowling from the four years starting in 2014 until the end of 2017. Look how many batters went from incredible against pace to just not. There are 19 players on this list and we have five who averaged more against pace in this period than they did in the period before. Two Kiwis, two Sri Lankans, and Dean Elgar just holding on. But look at the pattern at the other end. These are the most experienced test batters against pace in the last eight years. And almost all of them are massively worse against it now than they used to be. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about the fact that T20 being the reason for batting declining in tests. Well, look at these players. Pujara, Brathwaite, Rahane, these are not T20 players. And three of the Fab Four have slipped, with only Kane Williamson barely treading water. Something changed radically in seam bowling at this time. Wobbles, analysis, lengths, and DRS all played a big part. But even with all that said, and everyone struggling, Smith has struggled the most. Now, of course, he did have the longest way to fall, but he was the best player of seam in modern cricket, and perhaps close to of all time, and now he's not. And I'm not sure exactly what the difference is now. I think teams do bowl better to him, but I also think that Joffre Archer Bouncer certainly played a part in this. I don't think it's a stunning coincidence that has happened after that. But beforehand, he was clocking cricket. And now he's just playing the same game as everyone else. 